Mother Knows Best. We're going to do foods that I knew as a child. Okay, I will speak more loudly. Um, we're going to do a jello that my mother made as, when we were children that was awful, and I think it still <laughs> is awful. You can test it. She just wants you to have as much misery as she yeah. did as a child. Okay. I would like to introduce my sous chef. Deidre Martinez, the director at the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. So she knows a Hello. lot of Sheboygan. Oh, thank you. And Deidre and her husband have six children. Ooh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. What, what are their ages? Uh, we've got a 14, 16, 20, 20, 24, and 27. Oh. Wow. So, yes. OK, OK. Yes. Five boys, one girl. I'll take five more boys all day, every day, before I take another girl. Well, how old is the girl? She's now 20. Okay, well. God love her. She's in Florida in college. Yes, yes, sure. <laughs> and sure. Uh, thriving, and we are so happy and supportive of that. Of course But you boy are. is the household calm and quiet now. <laughs> yes. I grew up in a family of three girls. I was the oldest. I had flaming red hair at that time. Janice had curly blonde hair. Doreen had dark hair. Now my mother had curly black hair and green eyes. Dad loved to walk out with his women and his girls. <laughs> <laughs> and they it would say, are they yours? Yes. Um, we have Beth, who is in charge of the Kool-Aid mixed with the champagne. Kool-Aid was a great treat when I was a kid. Oh my goodness. It was sweet and it was red. So, but we're having a little bit of champagne added to our Kool-Aid. Peg Watson, who you recognize, she's been with us a lot, that I sometimes call Sue. Mother made this dress and mother wore this dress and it fits Sue. Peggy. 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 <laughs> See? Peggy. Mother had a gift for sewing. And of course, in her day, they learned sewing in school. And by the time she was 12, she won every sewing contest she ever entered. She was just gifted in that area and loved doing it. Deidre. I introduced Deidre. And of course, you know Terry, who has been with us before, and she takes time off from work to come and be with us. Thank you, Terry. Yes. We have I'm Sue. Working here anyway. <laughs> we have wonderful <laughs> Sue Garski. She, I was going to say something about you, but I've forgotten what it is. It was good. Oh, the gardening, the gardening, yes. <laughs> and of course, Francoise Pietzner, who was with us from the old place, and now she comes to help us here today. She's my runner. This is, this is my mother and my father in 1957. I was a junior in high school. And if you see this more closely, she also made that dress and dad's shirts. Dad had rheumatoid arthritis, so he was quite crooked, but she would make his shirts to be even when they were on his body. Wow. She was very good. Was she a master, nice. a master chef also? No, she just made food that the family would eat. And of course, in those days, it was a lot of work. For instance, we're going to have the cranberries Mother and dad loved the cooked cranberries, but we children, but we ate it. But then when mother discovered grinding the cranberries in that grinder that you clamp onto the side of your, and just ground cranberries and sugar, man, that tasted great. <laughs> now we're going to do this with a food processor. <laughs> uh, we're going to make hamburger pie. And I've used a lot of pie crusts, and I've made 
some of the crusts for the pies also. And I had shortening and I had lard. I couldn't remember which mother preferred, so I used the lard and it was kind of tough. I bet she used shortening. I'll use shortening next time. And hamburger cooked with onions, you have the recipe. Put in the crust, mix together cottage cheese and eggs, put it on top and bake it. And of course, that texture of cottage cheese wasn't real pleasant in a child's mouth, but made no difference, we had to eat it. But when she put it on top of the hamburger pie, that was great. And of course, you all know, when your mother had the pie made and the crust was hanging down, she cut it off with a knife. All the mothers did that and made these. Yes, yes. And these you'll see are kind of tough and they're made with the lard. Peanut squares, everybody loves peanut squares. Even I in the beginning would take cake cut it, try to frost it, it was extremely difficult. Now, I make pound cake, cut it in half and let it sort of dry out overnight, dip it into some thin icing and into the big bowl of peanuts, easy, very efficient. I'm not going to use the word easy, but it was easy, <laughs> but very efficient. Janet Ray did all of these in less than an hour yesterday. There's Janet Ray right there. Thank you, Janet Ray. And thank you, all of you volunteers. Thank you, thank you so much. The aprons are made from mother's tablecloths. And if you feel them, they're of real cotton. No poly in any of them. Marianne Schellinger, was given a lot of cookbooks, like a thousand, from a relative who died, and she's brought here uh, 100. So please take home cookbooks. And she's taking cookbooks to all sorts of places. Also, Mary Ann said that. Taste of Sheboygan cookbook. Hope they're not going to my house. Lee's fine, Lee's fine, Lee's fine. Um, Taste of Sheboygan will be online, maybe already, but in time for Christmas, there will be a printed copy. Taste of Sheboygan cookbook, and I'll bet you'll have them at the chamber. Uh, we will do our best. I know that Blue Harbor is the, um, has been the lead in that project. Oh, they have, so, okay. Yes, we will support however they'd like us to support. All right, yes. Yeah. And... Mary Ann's recipe for something is in here. <laughs> Sour cream butter horns, which is a Christmas cookie. So when this comes out in, at winter, we'll have to purchase one for all of the grandkids, right? Along, and then please have them take another couple dozen church cookbooks that I have on the shelf. I picked up this, was one of the cookbooks that Mary Ann brought, The Old Farmhouse Kitchen. And you can see that's from the 20s and 30s. But they have a recipe in here for cookies made with M&Ms. There were no M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> none, none. Here, Susie, we'll just put this on the table behind you. So be sure to take home a cookbook or two with you today. Okay, Deidre, let's start making okay. a hamburger pie. Glass pie pan or metal. And this wonderful stuff that works. This was a great invention. Yes, yes. oh my yes. goodness. Some of the pies just kind of shake in the pans. You know we'll be able to get them out. And this, you, you can see, is not from lard or shortening, and it's the generic. And as I always say, the pie crust police do not come to your house ever. You do as you please. 
sometimes it sticks. You know, I know all of you have used these. Now, when my mother would roll out the pie crust, she would roll it and then put it in quarters like this, right? And then put it in the pie plate and pie crust. Fast forward three hours. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Now, Deirdre, if you get some gloves, you can, this is the ground beef and onions. Now I must tell you, I did not chop all the onions. I bought dried onions because I figured if the dried onions were in there with the hamburger as it was cooking and the hamburger was oozing out all of its fat, the onions would absorb all of that fat and it'll still be in our food. <laughs> yes, Vicki. <laughs> and people, so yes, that just goes in there. Okay. Am I just using my hand? Or just using, yeah, oh, just use your just hand. Just my hand, okay. Oh, yeah. All right, is it all going in here? I think it Ms. will Marilyn? fit, yeah. Okay. Any questions about the awful jello or the hamburger pie? <laughs> Maybe you will like it. Yes, go ahead. Oh, I had about 12 pounds of ground beef and I put in three-fourths of a jar of dried onions. I think your recipe will tell you. Does it say? Yes. Okay. Okay. And large is whatever you think large is. Okay, and okay. Th then egg and cottage cheese mixed together. Egg and cottage cheese mixed together. <laughs> Ooh. Can you find some paprika? I need paprika in the kitchen. She, yeah. This was a joke I think she's playing on me. No, she no. found the messiest stuff. <laughs> this just goes on top? It this just goes on. In? Nope. Okay. Uh, and then just use your gloved hands to spread it out, okay. and then you can take off the gloves. We have a box of gloves. OK. I will say the texture of the meat. Um, and I don't have cats, but it does resemble a little bit of cat food. If cat I'm food? Being honest. <laughs> and I'll bet cats would love to eat it. <laughs> it does smell better. It does smell far better than cat food, though. <laughs> <laughs> and to make yes. the pie look correct, I put paprika on top. Okay. I want to show you what this looks like. And we, we made, I made eight pies, so we're cutting them in sixes. You get a decent portion. We couldn't figure out how to do sixes, so we cut them in eights. <laughs> sixes is simply you cut it in half, one, two, three. Okay. Paprika, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Then yep. there will be seconds if somebody wants That's one, That's correct, right? there will and be. there's yep. extra. Yeah. Anyway. Good, 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 good. All right. Okay. Paprika, yeah. carefully measured. Whoops. <laughs> carefully measured. Yep. This goes in the oven until the crust is done. My oven must be on its way out. It took almost an hour for my ovens to do it yesterday. But keep an eye on it. Remember, the meat is already cooked. You simply want the pie crust to look done instead of pasty looking. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave this here and I'll okay. cut this. Okay. So cut it in half, cut it in thirds. Whoops, all the way through. It does look far better cooked all the way. Oh I yeah. I promise. <laughs> there. We're going to bring the pies later. They're, they've cut them and they're warm. They'll bring them down later. And, and of course, you know, this is the extra pie crust with cinnamon and sugar. Did your mother do that? She did not. Okay. I would say I did not learn any of my cooking skills from my mother. Do you, do Thank you, God I had a wonderful grandmother though. Okay. Yes, yes. Or my husband may not be my husband right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> what sort of things did your grandmother like to cook? My grandmother is um, from Iceland, so she oh. moved here at, um, she was not even quite 18. My, my grandfather uh, was in the Air Force and was stationed in Iceland and met, of course, this beautiful blonde, Icelandic, ice blue-eyed babe, mm -hmm. yep. um, and yep. said, oh yeah, you're coming home with me. Right, right. Um, and servicemen always look good to women. Oh, yes, yes. And, my, and then my grandfather is... Um, is Mexican, so he's this tall, dark, oh, beautiful, black, yes, curly yes, hair, yes, and yep. you know, just you know, real tough guy, and all the things. And so, yes, um, so she made a lot of um, different things. We ate a lot of different foods from Iceland, but she cooked everything from scratch every day. So um, there were six, um, five. Oh my gosh, let me count how many on that side. Yeah, there were five siblings. So my dad, he had one brother, three sisters, and then my grandfather traveled because he was. You know, he would go all sorts of places for the Air Force, and then she was home, and she sewed all of their clothes and cooked all of their mm -hmm. meals. Mm -hmm. So, thankfully, um, I learned from my Emma how to cook. Good. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Otherwise, yes, my my kids would be starving right now. So, <laughs> a friend of mine and our and my daughter went to Iceland. I don't know, 30 years ago, something like that. Time passes, and. Uh, we went to Gullfoss to see that, and I remember the the person there with us said, "Now, don't see if that water is hot; <laughs> it is boiling." Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And then we went to a big dance hall one night, and nobody drinks and drives in Iceland. Period. End. The, buses and buses and buses came to the giant dance hall and that's what we did too and we danced and we had a good time and lots of drinking and lots of drunks but nobody drove home yes zero responsible drunks yes yes, yes. right yes. exactly yes. exactly yes and they explained to us that if you're caught with any alcohol in your bloodstream your driver's license is taken away that's the end yeah yeah so hey. they they don't have drunk drivers Yes, far less crime, far less lots of things. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. The blue eyes from Iceland. Yes, for sure. Certainly not from the Mexican side. That's <laughs> right, yes. No. Right. Well, no. and you know, Marilyn Montemayor, my husband was from Waco, Texas, Mexican heritage. Mm -hmm. We had three, he has black hair, of course. I used to have flaming red. We had three redheads, not any black hair wow. in the bunch. Oh, wow, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he loves, he loves that, yeah. Yes. What they say is your children resemble the one that was enjoying themselves the most. <laughs> going to be a class coming up called Safe Sex for Seniors. Well, there is no problem. Seniors say, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there'll be anybody coming to that. I don't oh, know. Oh, I have a feeling it'll be a full house. Oh. I may show up, to, you know, because this is, sounds like a fun, fun conversation. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Oh, cranberries and we didn't have any more white sugar in the kitchen here, so we're using brown. In fact, some of the Kool-Aid has brown sugar. You can use white or brown. As I say, the sugar police are not coming to your house for this either. And you carefully measure it until it's to your taste. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whoops, now. Oh, there we go. Yep. Grinding. Oh, that grinding. grinder. And of course, with that grinder, you know it drips on the floor constantly. <laughs> okay, Deidre. Yes. Grab a. Here, give it a taste. See if it's sweet enough. Oh, give it a taste. Oh. Well, you know, I'm so sweet, Marilyn. It might be too sweet okay. for me because I don't need any extra. Okay. That's right. Oh, I think it's good. Okay. It's a little tart, but I like tart. All right. So, so, and that's all it took. Man, when mother did, of course, 
As I say, that grinder was a lot of work, but then we children ate that we were eagerly. We so fast with that, right? Pardon? We were so fast. Yes, yes. <laughs> Manual labor she's making me do here. And then cleaning it up. And so it. Oh, I'm sure. Uh -huh. And then if you would take a rubber scraper and get the rest of this into the bowl. Okay. You want me to use this one here? That's or? fine. Okay. Any questions about cranberry relish? And I think lots of people do this, and then they add things like pineapple and whipped cream and so forth. Or, and this on top of ice cream. Oh, my grandfather, who lived to be 102, and his main food all his life was bacon and white bread from the bakery. So everything they tell you is wrong. Uh, well, at least for him. The more, the more lard, the better. But the more this, fat, the better. When mother made this, grandfather was thrilled with that on ice cream. Who knew? Yep. I could see us putting this in Icelandic pancakes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. On it so or mix. Icelandic pancakes are like Swedish pancakes, but even thinner. Okay. And we don't eat them with syrup. We can make them either rolled with sugar. So you just put sprinkle sugar, roll it up, and eat it. They call them pancakes. Uh, it's really a dessert, if we're being honest. It's but a, it's a you crepe. Can eat, you can eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Yes, yeah. it's a crepe. Or we would, you know, have them, they're rounded. You would put some sort of jam or um, compote or something like this in there and rip whipping cream. And then you fold it into a triangle and you kind of seal around the edges. And then, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. So we can make, we can do Icelandic pancakes another day. That's a lot of work. There's a lot of wrist work involved, and we haven't figured out a fast way to do it because it's a special pan. You can only really do one oh, at a time. Right. Yes, but, but now I sometimes it. if I make crepes, I do them ahead of time with parchment between each one. Mm, mm-hmm. Yep. But you can see the same food throughout the world, slightly different look to it, taste to it. <laughs> okay. Any questions about the pie? the pie crust, the cranberries, and all of this stuff now can go back here. Okay. I made a pound cake and and you can make your squares any size you want. Let's cut this baby in half. About this size. And you can cut the top off so it's square if you want to. Powdered sugar, and I need some water in here, maybe half. Half? Okay. Yeah. And we want a drippy icing. Drippy icing. Yep. Stirring, stirring. What is that children's song about stirring and stirring? I used to teach nursery school, and we would sing that, and I can't remember anymore. I'm thinking of Dora the Explorer, because that was my kids' age range, okay. and they would do vate, vate, chocolate. Oh, okay, all right, all <laughs> Mix right. Mix that chocolate? No, not, not that one. It was, it was stirring a pot, Yeah. and yeah. I don't remember what. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? We remember lots of things and we forget lots of things. One of the benefits of coming here to Uptown is we're talking to each other and we find out I'm not the only one who cannot remember what I ate for breakfast. <laughs> okay, it's like that. Okay. Drop in a piece of the cake. I chopped the peanuts yesterday in the food processor. And your mother had a food processor too, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Her name was Marilyn. <laughs> yeah. And Doreen, and there was a third, I can't recall the third. Janice. And Janice. <laughs> Done. Voila. It is really e efficient. 
drippy, drippy ice, icing is the key. As I say, Janet did all of these in an hour. Oh, and there is a person here named Susie Kilton, whose mother taught her to do the grapevine, right? Shuffle off to Buffalo. Well, I'm just telling you this. I don't know if she's willing to show it to us or not. It's up to her. OK, good. <laughs> and your mother taught you this. I yeah. love it. Oh, Susie, I love that. Susie. Oh. <laughs> Last night, before I went to sleep, I was listening to some old music on my little machine. And El Martino Spanish Eyes came up, which is a nice song for dancing, right? So I said to Lee this morning, when the kids come over Sunday for noon, I'm going to put that on and you and I are going to dance. He said, OK. He said, yes, I know, I know, okay. I know. All right. Well, and let's see if he carries through. Yeah, right, right. And of course, my mother met my dad in Minnesota. He was part of the CCC's, the Civil Conservation Corps, that, and he was building the park at Fort Ridgely, Minnesota. He was in uniform. He was at dances, mm -hmm. met mother. Yep. Mm -hmm. Funny how that works. Yep. A uniform yeah. and a dance. Yes, and a cute girl. Sure, right. Yes. Right. Okay, let's get the pies. Time to eat. Yes. yes. Time to eat 1955 food. <laughs> 